Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, host Lüning, I'm the master taste of whiskey.com and today we have the Glenmorangie Bond House number one, 27 years of age, vintage 1989, bottled 2017 for a hefty 600 euros, dollars, pounds with an ABV of 43%. And the distributor was so kind and sent me a wooden, small wooden box with the Glenmorangie 1989 on it. And in this box, there had been this miniature and a full package of malt. So I <laughs> spread it here on the floor. Uh, so I have to, have to clean up soon. And here we have this miniature. And uh, well, let's open this box where you can see all this wonderful finish inside. And uh, yeah, um, this whiskey is produced from ex bourbon cask and ex Oloroso sherry cask, and found a and got a finishing or part of those casks got a finishing in Cote Roti cask. This is the Upper Rhone Valley, Cote Roti, and Roti is French and means like roasted. Uh, yeah, roasted meat. And uh, so this code roti means uh, <laughs> roasted slopes. That means that the sun is burning very heftily into this uh, mountain, uh, this valley side, and the wine there gets a lot of sun and a lot of ABV afterwards. And uh, this is only 264 hectares in size and uh, they produce a million bottles of red wine there every year and from those wines from the barrique maturation of those wines there had been cask for the finishing of this whiskey um, and in this bottle ah first to the bondhausen uh, probably it's in here uh, the Bondhaus number one collection. This is the second bottle from this collection. There had been a 1990 already out there. And here they write Bondhaus number one. From their origin years, the exclusive whiskies of Glenmorangie's vintage collection Bondhaus number one were marked for greatness. Yet only the Highland distillers, skillful whiskey creators could capture and remarkably uh, um, ir irreplaceable. Uh, yeah, so there had been uh, the largest of Glenmorangie's traditional 19th century bonded warehouses. And in this huge, large warehouse, now the stills are situated. Before, there had been another still house on the premise. And uh, when the big British recession ended uh, in the, well, in the end of the 80s, then the demand for whiskey increased and uh, they built a new still, or they built the new stills in this old warehouse, which is quite high. And they, well, today it's the cathedral of whiskey making. The stills are very high, six meters, 18 feet. And uh, when I visited them in 1995, the first time, uh, they haven't filled the, uh, the still house with all, or all, places for stills weren't filled. So later in the 2000s something, they added two more stills and today they're producing around the clock three shifts uh, with all stills in there is six or eight. I think there are eight now or 10, so quite a lot. And they are very slim, very tall and they have a reflux bowl. So the whiskey which comes out of those stills is very, very smooth. It's very well separated. Uh, from those fusel oils, so that the whiskey is very, very clear. Uh, so this is that transformation. In 1990, its purpose was to change entirely as bonded warehouse number one was transformed into the domestic still house today renowned as Glenmorangie's Highland Cathedral. Yeah. The tallest in Scotland, yes. As it lay maturing in the finest cast, the untold mastery of the uh, 
vintage distinctive flavor captured the imagination of Dr. Bill Lumsden, Glamorangia's director of distilling and whiskey creation. Setting a preacher's parcel aside, he determined to celebrate the Stillhouse legacy in a momentous single malt. Well, uh, we have to discuss that. Um, there is a 25 years year old whiskey of Glamorangia. It's called Quarter Century, I think. And it has the same uh, wonderful bottle as it's used here. And uh, well, if you have casks that age and that might not be uh, intense enough for a quarter century single malt from Glamorangi, you might use them for uh, a finishing period. And uh, you can add Oloroso Sherry casks, and then you have a, a wonderful, complex, intense whiskey. So they wouldn't spoil uh, those casks which haven't matured enough because in the start they used uh, casks, ex bourbon casks, for three times. So first fill means the first fill after bourbon and second fill which is a lot lighter and then third fill which is very very light. In the meantime they changed from the usage of three casks to only two, two times. And, uh, well, the whiskey from the third maturation in those casks must have been very, very weak, light. So I think those are the candidates for the finishing in those code roti casks. Yeah, that's it. So it's limited edition with 6,178 6, bottles. And this one is number 2,328. We have seen that, we have seen that. There's a copper plate in here. Uh, everything which is shiny uh, is covered by plastic, so that there are no scratches on it uh, if the first buyer gets that. And uh, here I got this sample from the distributor. Thank you very much. <laughs> we wouldn't dare to open one of those very, very expensive bottles. Here we go. Fruity first, more fruit, tropical fruit, and a little bit of sourness in it, black currant, some apples, very few vanilla, very few um, toffee. Caramel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. In the start, it's very smooth and like. Clamorangi always is due to these high stills, very light, friendly, and then the oak kicks in. Then a lot of spiciness appears, pepper shows up, and uh, yeah, light bitterness appears in the back from the casks. Now vanilla is present, toffee is showing through, and there is some fruit fruity note present still present but the yolk the peppery the spiciness is much much stronger this i found as well in the 18 years Bian Morangi. they have a not a similar a quite similar looking uh, bottle but not that elegant as this one is uh, but the content shows a cask influence which is extreme so there's some eucalyptus, eucalyptus oiliness in the back. Some honey showing through. Mm -hmm. Having it for more than 15 seconds on your tongue, then the spiciness kicks in. And now I have a complete feeling of pepper in my mouth. 
it's no sharpness of alcohol. It's just 43% ABV. The stills are very tall, so the alcohol is clean. There are no sharp uh, feints or fusel oils in it. No, uh, it's all from the casts. And this is really quite complex. Yeah, wonderful drum. Unfortunately, they ask a lot of money for it. Oh, I have no idea how long those 6,100 something uh, bottles will be enough for the market if it's still there for two, three, four years or if they are gone just in one season. I have no idea. Uh, I also do not know when those uh, different uh, Bond Warehouse number one uh, bottles appear and how many there will be. And this is number two. So collectors beware. There's a new series uh, worth collecting. So the first is already gone. You have to speed up, get one. Uh, this is this is the second. And uh, well, how many there will be? I have no idea. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come as always.